if you don't have experience in this industry, it's just too devastating. It's just not meant for people with a sensitive soul. It's just not. Nobody can take this away from me. Like, how dare you? For me, it was like, this is going to happen by any means necessary. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. This is what I committed to when I was six years old. You'd be surprised how many times I've seen, oh my God, I thought JoJo died. Like, she's still out here? Yeah, bitch, I'm still here. <laughs> like, Although I wasn't putting things out and it appeared that I was on hiatus or vacation, I was making albums. She's turning music in consistently, but nothing is being done with it. I just didn't understand where the lack of follow through came from. When we had such big success, they had burned a lot of bridges with different distribution companies. I saw people that opened for me coming up and starting their careers and surpassing me. It was so incredibly upsetting. I started to hear whispers of other artists having very serious problems with Black Brown, the label. And then a person who worked there before they left said to me and my mom, you need to abandon this ship before it sinks. At a certain point, my label was no longer a functioning record label. They lost their distribution. They were getting sued left and right. I recorded hundreds of songs, wrote hundreds of songs. They didn't come out. And it felt like I was banging my head into a wall because I'm like, is anybody ever gonna hear this? It felt so insane. She was really stuck. That contract, they owned her voice. She was really in a place where she thought she was never going to sing again in a commercial way. It had been two years that I was working on the album and nothing had happened. Me and my team were looking for an out. The lawyer that I had looked through the contract and was like, um, this is ironclad, you're never getting out of this. We literally had litigators and attorneys tell her, you need to find a plan B because you're probably never going to be able to be a part of this industry again in a way that you're used to. And I was like, Oh my God, how is this possible? I signed this contract when I was 12. This is no longer a functioning record label. They don't have an office anymore. And my family was like, Joe, just go to college. Like, f this industry, get, get, get out of it. Like, you're a smart girl, you know? You could go get a degree and be, do whatever you want. I'm like, I couldn't imagine actually doing that. If I don't really give this my all, I'll never forgive myself. I moved forward with filing of the first lawsuit. They were gonna try to bleed me dry and see how long I could go before I would give up. My lawyers, Shannon and Hayes, combed through the contract and eventually found this thing in New York law that says that you can't keep a minor in a personal service contract for more than seven years. And that statute was up. And then it was just kind of on from there. During the lawsuit, I wasn't allowed to make money from putting out music. Black Round owned my voice and name and likeness. But the biggest thing was my voice, because I did not care about the name JoJo. I would have pulled a prince in a second. You could call me whatever the hell you want. I don't care. I was going to keep fighting if I was going to go through with this lawsuit, even if it meant that I would lose every dollar that I had. They'd be there for me on the other side. People had got so passionate behind the lawsuit this hashtag free JoJo movement and people making their own merchandise and rocking it and spreading the word and getting it to people who are like, is JoJo dead? What the f happened to her? My fans would be like, you don't know what happened? You know, just like letting people know. I mean, they were my street team for free and just out of passion and love. When Black Round found out that I'm in this, like I'm really going to really try to get out of this, they settled. I didn't get any money. I didn't get any damages, anything like that. I just walked away being able to sign another record contract. I was like, let's go. All of these records that her fans knew her by were not on the streaming services. It just made me angry, and it made me feel like my story is being erased, and I needed to change the narrative. 
So she had the idea to re-record those first two albums and put them on streaming. If I covered my own material, those would be new masters. This was an opportunity for the creatives that were involved in making these songs to finally get royalties, to finally get paid. I can hardly wait. So she put up all the money herself and recording albums for anybody who's done it before. Uh, you know that it's not cheap. I recorded two songs a day. I knew that what my fans wanted wasn't a reinvented version of my first two albums. I really wanted to give them what they deserve, which is to be able to feel nostalgic with the music that they grew up with. We had to like find ripped versions on YouTube of my own music so I could refer back to what these songs were, how they sounded. I re-sang everything, I did all my background. It was really cathartic. It was amazing to kind of get in touch with that, that 12 year old and that 14 year old when I was making those first two albums because she was so pure and unjaded and excited. She found her love for music um, in an R&B way again, in a soulful way again. And both of them went number one on iTunes. I ended up recouping all the money that I had spent in the first quarter of it being released. So that was a really great affirmation. They believed in me. And I went from feeling like a disempowered child to feeling like a capable woman.